Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com. In this tutorial, we're going to look at if, else if. Uh, so in, in the last tutorial, um, I created this project where we have like a, we output a menu and we ask the user to enter their selection. And then we take um, different actions depending on the range of values that are, that are entered. Um, well, here, here we're checking to see if they entered a specific value and here we're checking ranges. What we usually want to do with a menu like this is to check each of the possible values. So we, we don't really, it's not elegant at all, it's quite ugly to have multiple if-elses in your program. What we want is one statement that can check um, all of these different values. And we can do that with a if-else-if statement. So let, let's delete this here. And um, if you've tried the code yourself from the previous tutorials, then you should find this uh, pretty easy, hopefully. So I'm going to type here if, and let's say value, that's the value that the user entered, equals one. And then we can say see out adding new record dot 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 endler. And of course, you, you could have anything in this menu, it's just a made up example. And we've, we've seen that you could um, have an else on there. Um, but let's what, what, what we can also do is we can type if, uh, sorry, else space if value equals equals two. And then we can say, uh, let's say, see out delete, deleting record, deleting record. And we can have as many of these else if clauses as we like. Uh, be sure that you don't leave any blank lines under here because it'll, um, it'll compile, that'll still run, but it just looks really messy. And also be very, very careful to um, indent the stuff between these brackets with an extra tab. And it's, it's good practice, I think, uh, when you're beginning especially to just use the auto format anyway, just to double check, go to right click source. Um, format just to double check that your formatting is good that's a really important thing to get right okay so let's copy this else if and we'll have three more of them two three so we can check three four and five and i'll use the shortcut which is on the mac is command shift f to format these to save me some time and uh, so option three should be viewing viewing record let's say Option four, we can have searching. And um, probably should say initiating search or something, but you get the idea. Um, and we can also combine else if, if else if with else. So what if they enter some other value here that isn't one, two, three, four, or five? We can say finally here else and see out invalid option. So what's going to happen here is um, that the um, the compiler, well, the um, the program is is when it's compiled is going to work down these different options one one after the other, and as soon as it finds one that evaluates to true, it's going to stop there. So you can only have um, you, only one of these options is going to execute, and that's important to keep in mind. So we're going to check here: um, is the value one? If not, go to the next one. Is it two? If not, next one. Is it three? Is it four? Is it five? And else, if it's none of those, we're going to do this. So let's let's output this now. Uh, let's run it. Um, so let's check one, adding new record. Let's try five, quitting. Let's add something else. Um, let's try some other input like zero or 500 or something. And it says invalid option. Uh, so a another really important basic building block of C++. Uh, so to practice this, um, probably the best way is create your own menu here and check the different options and use an if, else, if, else. So it should be, should be pretty simple if you followed the last tutorials. I just want to finish up by pointing out uh, something important here. I've said that you can use um, uh, conditions like this with strings. And here we're using it with integers. And you might wonder, can you use conditions, can you use ifs with um, floating point values? 
Well, let's try. So I'm going to say here float. In fact, uh, what I'll do is I'll, I'll, I'll comment this out. I'll comment out the block of code temporarily. Uh, we've seen that you can um, create a comment, a one line comment like this. This is a comment and it's, that can be really useful um, if you want to just comment one or two lines of code. You can also comment uh, a whole block like this. Type slash star and then at the end of where you want the comment to end, type star slash. Whoops, so you need a forward slash there. This is a forward slash. It's like if you go from left to right, you'd be going up the hill. If you imagine this is a sort of hill, that's a forward slash. And you need slash star and then end in star slash. And uh, multi-line comments like this, they're great for creating you know, big chunks of information that you need to put in your program. And they're also really great for commenting, commenting out blocks of code. So if there's something that you uh, don't need at the moment, uh, maybe you're debugging your program and you want to stop some bit of code executing, but you don't want to get rid of it completely, you can use star slash and slash star to comment out that code temporarily. So now this program will do nothing. But don't get carried away with that because um, if you do comment out code, um, it's, it's, it's best, if, if, you, if you're really not going to need it ever, then delete the code or just put it somewhere else. I've seen a lot of code that has lots and lots of commented out blocks in it that, that are there for years and it just looks horrible and terrible. So don't leave unnecessary code in permanently. It's good as a, like a temporary thing usually. So what, what I want to show you is, uh, I'm going to write here float value equals, let's say, I don't know, 4.5. And let's say if value equals equals 4.5, then see out value, uh, sorry, see out, um, let's say equals endler, else see out not equal. So you'd think looking at this code that it should say um, that, that, um, that this is equal to this because we, we set it equal to 4.5 and we're testing 4.5 in the equality. But if we, if we run it, it says, um, well here it says it is equal actually, which I'm a little surprised. Let's try something else. Let's try 1.1 maybe. 1.1. Hopefully I can demonstrate this to you. Now it says not equal. So what, what's going on here? And basically, um, if, if you compare flow with equals equals, the behavior of it is going to be pretty unpredictable, um, really. So it's, it's best just not to do it, just leave it alone. Um, depending on your compiler, your system, whether you use floats and, or doubles or whatever, you might find that it works as you expect, but you might not. And I think the best thing there is just to leave it alone. Don't use equals equals with floating point values. The reason is that as we've seen in a previous tutorial, um, floating point values are, store are not stored with infinite precision because you've only got so much computer memory. Uh, so if we actually output this float value, let's do it. So I've, I've actually already included IO manip at the top and we have seen this before. And that allows me to do this, see out uh, let's output it in fixed notation. So I want it to write all the numbers out rather than using scientific notation. And I can use set precision from IO manip. Let's set it to 10. And then we can output the value. And this is stuff that we've seen um, in a previous tutorial. Let's run that. And we see that in fact, the float value when it comes up is, is not precisely equal to 1.1 because of the, the difficulty of storing stuff in the computer memory with, um, with uh, perfect precision. But what you can safely do with floating point numbers is you can certainly use less than or greater than. So we can say if value is greater than 1.2, I know that's always going to work uh, because um, well, at worst, I suppose this could come out as being equal to 1.14 or something, but 1.1 um, is definitely going to be less than equal to 1.2. So it's, don't get too detailed with it. Like it, um, 
it's best not to start doing is it stuff like is it less than 1.11 well that's going to work in this case but um yeah but be i, I would say be be careful uh and be aware that your your number is going to um it's, it's going to have in effect some extra numbers on the end of it that are going to be basically garbage and um you're safe if you're comparing it kind of to the next number up 1.1 1.2 it's fine but don't use equals equals and don't try to get too detailed don't do stuff like you know like this because will it work or will it not work probably in this case but you know it's getting a bit dodgy because who knows what this number actually is in the computer memory um, so yeah uh, don't use equals equals and be careful when you're comparing floats and doubles because that, that can catch you out. So I'm going to uncomment this now. Uh, so for practice, create your own menu system and uh, use if, else, if, else to check the different values. Or if you can think of some other program, uh, maybe using strings or um, even doubles with comparisons greater than or equal to or floats, uh, then make something up and try it yourself. But the important thing is to try um, if else if else and make sure that you can actually successfully get it working so in the next tutorial i think what we'll we'll do um, is um, we'll look at some more advanced conditions because you can combine conditions and uh, i, I want to get on uh, as soon as possible really to looking at loops because that even makes the the program a whole other level of of interesting and gives you a lot more power but um, we've got maybe one or two little things to look at before we get to loops so that's it for this tutorial uh, you can find more videos on my website which is caveofprogramming.com like a huge amount of free stuff there and until next time happy coding <laughs>